I'm back with another video and thank you guys for tuning in. Today I'm going to be doing a two part video. Um, a lot of guys, a lot of people have been asking me about showing you guys how I create my designs in Photoshop. So today I'm going to be doing kind of a recreation of a design that someone created in custom ink so that I can use it to print on some baby onesies. So if you guys are interested, stay tuned. Right here I have six baby onesies. This one is actually a newborn onesie, and the rest of these are six-month onesies. So I'm gonna be, um, I'm gonna show you guys how I created the design on the computer, and then I'm gonna cut the vinyl and apply the designs to the shirts. So let's get started. First thing that I'm gonna do um, right here, this is actually the design, which is a screenshot from Custom Ink, and as you can see. Um, it's basically just the design that they created online. They screenshotted the design and they emailed it to me. So the first thing that I would do is open up Photoshop. And once Photoshop opens up, um, what I like to do when I'm working on designs is create my own, like a new file right here in I'm usually working in 13 by 19 because I use those size transparencies when I'm screen printing for most of my orders. But because this is going to actually be a vinyl design because it's for baby onesies. Um, and this way that I did this is not always the ideal way. But before I actually did this design, I did look for clip art that was similar to this and was unsuccessful so um, I'm going to show you guys the way that I did it and it actually worked and every design is not going to work like this but you can try it and see for yourself and first I'm going to uh, scale this to fit the screen then I'm going to open and I have to find it I'm going to open this design up inside of Photoshop. So right here you can see the design. And as you see the design, I always have my, my extra showing so that I can line everything up easily. But because I'm trying to do a tutorial, I'm going to show you. And the way that you show your, your extras, which is like the... Um, the grid that helps you be able to line it up and everything like that you go right up here at the top and you'll see where it says view and you click on view and if you, you can click on extras and if you click on extras and everything is not showing you can go right below extras and it'll say show and you can uh, choose what you want to show right here you can you can choose grid smart guides pixel grid or whatever so since I'm showing y'all the tutorial, I'm going to remove the extras just so that y'all can see it better. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go right over here to the left side pane. And you have a few tools on this left side. Now the first tool is the move tool. Then you have like the rectangle tool. And the tool that we are actually looking for is the magic wand tool. And if you right click on it, let me go ahead and place that because I forgot to do that. But if you right click on the magic wand tool, it's either going to say quick selection tool or magic wand tool. So if it says quick, quick selection tool, all you have to do is right click on it and choose the magic wand tool. And the next thing that I'm going to do right up here, right below the top tab, um, there's uh, three different things is anti-alias, contiguous, and simple all and sample all layers. So what I'm going to do is uncheck contiguous. Actually, I'm I'm actually going to just leave it checked. We'll uh, delete everything we don't need. So I selected contiguous, and I'm going to actually zoom in some more so you guys can see a little bit better everything that's going on so right here I'm gonna select the black with the magic wand tool and once I do that actually I'm gonna go edit and undo magic wand tool 
then I'm going to uncheck contiguous. I was right the first time. And like I'm telling you guys, I'm still learning in Photoshop. I mean, it's just so many different things you can do with Photoshop. But um, right here, I just select that, select the black with the magic wand tool. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down to layer view copy and I'm going to choose that. Okay, so it goes back to my original picture, but if you look all the way over on the right side, you'll see where it has your layers at. You'll see layer one is the layer that was just created. Every time you create a new layer, it'll name it layer one unless you change the name of it. If you don't change the name of it and you create more than one layer, you'll have layer one, layer two. But right here, I have layer one, and I'm not going to change the name of it because it's not needed for what I'm doing today. But if I was doing color separations or something like that, I would change the name of it. So right here, this is my original um, layer that I put on there. So what I'm going to do is cover the eye symbol. Okay, so now all you can see is the black. I'm going to fit it on screen, and you can see up here. The rest of these things are there also. So the next thing I'm going to do is go over to the eraser tool. And if you don't see one that shapes like an eraser, it's right above the paint bucket tool. But it's either going to say eraser tool, background eraser tool, or magic eraser tool. And what we need is the one that says eraser tool. So I'm going to select that. And as always, when you look, when you're choosing the tools over here if you right click you can see the other options so okay I have chosen eraser tool so the next thing I'm going to do is go up to the top right below file you see the size for the eraser and you can also right click while you're on the eraser and you can choose the size so you know you can either go up at the top above file or while you have the eraser tool selected choose the size and I want it to be pretty big because I kind of you know there's certain things I want to go ahead and get rid of so once I start erasing you know you just make sure that you erase everything and I they actually for the baby ones do not want this bottom saying on here so what I'm going to do is erase all of this and make sure that you erase it good because if you don't Sometimes it can cause problems uh, depending on what your design is. Okay, for this, I think I got everything. Yeah, and one way that you can check and make sure that you have everything. And this other thing that I'm going to do, I don't like if I have the eraser tool. And actually, I can see down at the bottom right here, I've erased just a little bit too much. So I'm going to go to e go to edit and I'm going to choose undo eraser. A few times I choose undo erase and then I have to choose step back so okay now that's right so it, I see that I have a little bit more right down below the image so I'm gonna go up and make my eraser tool smaller or you can right click and bring the size down and now I'm able to erase that little bit that I have without messing up the rest of my design okay so I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see it a little better what I'm doing. Okay, so basically here's the design and all I'm going to do now is go to layer 1 and I'm going to right click on layer 1. And I'm sorry, I know some of you are beginners so I want to kind of take it slow, but over on the right side of your screen at the bottom they have layers. First is my background, then is the image that I pulled into Photoshop and layer one is the image that I made from the color black so I'm gonna right click layer one and I'm gonna go to blending options and when I go to blending options depending on what version of Photoshop you have your items may be in a different order but basically what you want to do is come down to color overlay and choose I always choose color overlay and when I'm 
working with this I like for it to be in black so I have chosen color overlay and it is black and I now go to stroke and stroke is basically putting an outline and as you see down here you see how I have all of these red marks that's where I didn't erase good so what I'm going to do first I'm going to leave everything as it is and I'm going to hit OK over here on the right side of my box then I'm going to take my eraser and go back over and delete all of this Delete everything that I can. Okay, now it's pretty good. Now I'm going to go back over here and you can either double click on effects or you can get on layer one and you can right click. But I'm going to double click on effects to bring my box back up. Okay, so my stroke, I want my stroke to be black and the stroke is basically just an outline. And I make it black and I choose OK and another way that you can make it black is go down where the box is with the number symbol beside it the number symbol or the hashtag beside it and you can put all zeros like four zeros and hit OK and my stroke is very thick way thicker than I want it to be and as I'm looking at it it's actually on 25 so what I can do is either take this box right here where it says size for stroke and I can I can type in the number that I want or I can use this little uh, stroke scroll wheel to move it down so I can I click on that little triangle right there and then I use the wheel on my mouse to resize it okay so now that that right here is pretty decent about where I want it and it's actually on 11. I'm going to go down just a little bit and see what everything looks like. Okay. I think I'm going to leave it right here about on 8 because that separates everything. Like each of the letters are separate when I have it on 8. Let me see what 7 looks like. Okay. 7 or 8 should be good. So now I'm going to hit OK because I have it where I want it and I'm just going to uh, resize I'm going to go up to view and put it on fit screen so that I can see everything and I do have some things at the top that I didn't erase well so I'm going to go back and erase that and now that I have this erased um, basically you can take it into whatever program that you need to or if you were screen printing it you could put your registration marks on here if needed or at least your center line marks and place it in the exact place you need to but because I'm gonna cut this out using vinyl what I'm gonna do is go over to file and I'm gonna save this I'm gonna go to save as and I'm gonna save it as a JPEG and I already have it saved because I created this design earlier. I'm just recreating it so that I can show you guys how I did it. So I'm basically going to go here and go down to JPEG right here. And I already have it saved right there as you guys can see. So I don't need to save it. But all I would do is hit save. And I'm just going to show you guys how it works. Okay, so I'm going to hit save. And once it saves, it's going to give you another option. And as you guys see, it did save some of these other images where I didn't erase so good. But that's not going to be a problem. I can show you guys how to fix that. But you, you want to be sure to erase everything that you can so that it's nothing extra left the way that it is. Tell you what, for the sake of this, I'm going to go back and um, show you guys. I'm gonna go back and show you guys how to delete this. Okay, I'm just all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the big eraser and I'm gonna make it as big as I can to erase this top part. And this should get it. Okay, then I'm gonna go down 
and I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. And I'm not seeing this stuff that is saying is on here, so I'm just kind of going by eye, and hopefully that'll erase it. So I'm going to go back over here to File, and I'm going to hit Save As, and I'm going to save it as Test just for this video and then I'm going to go down to JPEG and choose JPEG and save it so I'm going to hit save okay so I did a better job of erasing the top part but this bottom part it's not going to too much matter so right here for JPEG options I like to move it all the way to large file the largest that you can the maximum which is 12 so you can either slide this little triangle all the way to the right or you can type in 12 right there and then hit OK. All right, now that I have it saved, I'm going to minimize this window and I'm going to go right here. This is the test that I saved, and this right here is actually the original one the test and the original one. So, right here, what I'm going to do now is click on Rolling Cut Studio, and I have Rolling Cut Studio open. And I'm gonna go and find my logo right here. And I'm gonna show I'm gonna use this test just so that I can show you guys um, what it looks how to fix that problem that that we're having with it. Okay, so I have it right here and it's huge on here. So I'm gonna move it down to where like this square right here. This is actually my workspace area. If it's anything that's outside of this area, it's not gonna cut it out. In Rolling Cut Studio, so I'm gonna bring it here, and I'm gonna right click on it, and then I'm gonna do Image Outline. And right here, you can see that it has made the image outline. It has like traced it, so it is making it into a line drawing, so that it can cut it out. So I'm gonna extract the contour lines, and I'm gonna hit OK. Okay, so now that I have used this full picture I don't need that anymore so I'm going to click on that and I'm going to hit delete and right here the way that I know what size to do this is um, I took a measuring tape and I measured my onesies so I know that it does not need to be wider than seven and a half inches so I'm going to right click on this and go to properties or you can go up top on this little tab and you can click on properties okay when I click on properties I'm gonna keep this in the same aspect ratio actually before I do that I'm gonna show you you guys this other thing while this is big so that you can see okay as you see right here below my design there are these little circles or whatever shapes they are it looks like triangles also so I'm gonna go up here to and I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit and I'm going to go up here to object and I'm going to click on break polyline and when I break polyline everything is individual like this E I could move this E away from everything else you know each letter is going to be individual anything that has a broken line in it like this A I can delete the center part of the A so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here and drag and make sure that I put this box over everything that I want to cut out and as you see all of this is highlighted in blue so now I'm going to hit delete and all of that is gone so I don't have to worry about that anymore so now I'm going to make another square and I'm going to click right here and drag my square out or my rectangle out and everything else is highlighted in blue so I'm going to go back up to object and I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click on integrate polylines okay now it has put everything back together and I can go over here at the top to properties and I can resize it so since I know that I don't need it to be wider than seven and a half I'm going to just click right here and highlight the size that that it is and I'm going to click on seven and once because I clicked on keep aspect ratio whatever number I put in here is going to make the bottom match it so that it will be the same aspect ratio it's going to make everything appropriate so I clicked on that and now all I would have to do is click on okay but just so you guys can kind of see it's seven inches wide so it's going to make this one relevant to that so I'm just going to click right here 
and it changed it to the size that it's going to be. So I click OK and everything is sized the way that I need it. So now I'm going to come over here to this little toolbar on the side and I'm going to click on the rectangle and now I'm going to put a rectangle around my design. And now that I have the rectangle around my design, I'm going to size it up so that I'm wasting the least amount of vinyl possible. So I'm going to try to box it in real close. And once I have it boxed in, and if you really, you know, this is good enough, but if you really want to see um, how close everything is boxed in and see if everything is going to print. You can come up here and you can click on file and you can go to cutting preview. So when you go to cutting preview, it's showing you everything that's going to be cut out. So I'm going to click on close. Okay, now because I'm doing this on heat transfer vinyl, which is going to go on to the baby onesies, I'm going to highlight this whole box right here. And then I'm going to go up to object and click on that. And then I need my image to be mirrored. So I have to go down and select mirror. And as you see, my image is reversed now. So because of my cutter, the way that it cuts and lines everything up, I'm going to move it down to this corner right here so that I can get the best conservation of vinyl and now all I have to do is click on cutting and my design will start to cut out. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you're interested in any of the equipment or supplies I use to make t-shirts, be sure to check the description box below. And don't forget, on Sundays, I do live streams. So be sure to tune in for that and ask any questions you have regarding t-shirts. And, you know, just join our discussion. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.